Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie. Today we're doing a one hour yin yoga class focusing on yoga for a healthy spine. This is class two of our yin yoga challenge where we're getting together once a week to do a full length yin yoga class. There's more information about that in the description of this video. But for this class, as usual, you might grab a cushion or a pillow. Something firmer is better, but just work with whatever you have and maybe a blanket as well. So press pause if you need to. Otherwise, we're ready to begin with our first yin yoga pose, which for today will be half butterfly pose. We'll be sitting on the mat. So you might take that cushion or pillow and use it to sit up on. And then you can begin by extending your left leg out nice and long and bringing your right foot in towards your pelvis. The closer you bring this right foot, the more intense this stretch is going to feel. So you can just find something that's appropriate for you. If your right knee is starting to protest a bit here, you can support it by placing your blanket or another cushion in underneath. And if over here on this left leg, if it's feeling very tight, especially within the hamstring, you can just take a bend into your knee. Also maybe roll up that blanket, put it in underneath. And then we're ready to start our pose. So let's begin just by lengthening the spine. Now we're going to go nice and slowly, walking the hands away from us and maybe dropping the head. So already starting to feel lots of sensation around the hamstring, within the lower back, all up through your spine. And this is a really nice pose for all the ligaments in the back of your spine. Helps to release the lower back. You're massaging all your internal stomach organs stimulating your kidneys and your liver. We'll be here for five minutes in total. So once you feel settled, start to find your breath, not forcing anything, just observing it as it comes in and out. And then start to tap into all the sensations you feel throughout your body. These sensations are your anchors to keep your mind here as best you can with your body. Already your mind might be starting to drift away and that's completely normal. Don't beat yourself up about it. As soon as you notice that you're thinking about something, just try to come back to your breath and back to your body.
if you're starting to feel any pain or discomfort within your left knee, you can just tighten your quads so you close that knee joint and that will help to support it a little bit more. Otherwise, just staying with the stillness of this pose for a few more breaths. When you're ready to release the pose, you can start to slowly push yourself away from the floor, coming back up towards a straight spine, and we'll very gently transition towards the other side. So you can stretch that right leg out long now, take a few moments if you need it, and then we'll bring the left foot in towards the groin this time. And same thing, supporting this left knee with a blanket or cushion underneath if you need to. Supporting your right leg either by bending it or engaging your quads so you can support this right knee. And then we're inhaling to lengthen our spine. Exhaling to walk the hands away. Not too far in the beginning, just slowly going edge by edge here. Maybe dropping the head, allowing your spine to round. And we're settling into this side of the pose for the next five minutes. Scanning through your body to find those sensations which will keep your mind anchored. Observing your breath. And just trying your best not to engage with your thoughts. Just tell yourself that you can think about those things later.
with time your body might start to open up a little bit and you might get some invitations to go a little bit deeper into the fold, maybe walking your hands further away from you, maybe dropping your head lower. Just remember in yin yoga, we only go to 80% of our capacity. So never forcing the body too much. Always being conscious of peeling it back when we have to. Once again, it's time for us to slowly transition out of the pose, pushing the floor away, finding a nice straight spine again. So take your time to release your leg. Once you're there, you can come into angel pose, staying sitting on your cushion, just having your knees bent. And then rest your forehead onto your knees or if needed you can bring your hands onto your knees here to create a platform for your head to rest. We're staying here for one minute really just feeling the effects of the pose that we've just practiced. And the only thing you have to do here is observe your body, observe your breath, and observe your thoughts. In your own time, you can start to slowly roll your head up again. You might bring your hands back behind you, leaning back on them. Have your feet about hip width distance apart, maybe wider. And then just slowly drop your knees from side to side, releasing any tension that might have accumulated within your hips and your lower back. Since we've been folding over ourselves, this is a nice chance just to open up your chest as well. Drop your shoulders back behind you. Maybe drop your head if it feels good. Now when you're ready, we will transition into our next yin pose, which is caterpillar pose. So this is a pose we practiced last week. If you weren't here, that's fine. We're sitting up on a cushion 
we have our legs out long in front of us. Feet are active, so they're not super flexed, they're not flopped, they're just active. If needed, knees can be bent here, that's no problem. And as always, you can place your blanket in underneath the knees if needed. Now we're inhaling to lengthen our spine. And as we exhale, we're walking the hands away from us, allowing the spine to round if we can, and then dropping the head towards the knees. Just as we did before, you don't have to go straight into a full fold. Just hang out wherever you are. And with time, your body might start to open up. And then you can start to go a little bit deeper. Here in caterpillar pose, providing a really nice release for your spine, helping to stretch the entire spine and release the lower back. Also massaging all those abdominal organs. We'll be here for five minutes. So just train yourself to settle into these poses by finding sensations you can attach your awareness to. Find your breath, attach your awareness to it. And then start to detach your awareness from any thoughts that the mind is throwing up. normal here for the head and neck to feel heavy. You can always support your head in your hands if you need to, resting your elbows on your thighs. You can also take a cushion to rest your head on, just place it on your legs. Take three more breaths here in Caterpillar. And 
is starting to take ourselves out of the pose, using your fingertips against the mat to slowly roll yourself back up. And once you're there, just do whatever you feel you need to do. You might just sit silently for a moment. You might lean back on your hands again and do those windshield wipers. And then from here, we're coming to lie on the back of the body. So there's no rush in getting there. You can remove your pillow. Hips in the center of the mat will slowly roll down. Always nice just to take a moment when you're on the floor to feel your spine aligning against the hardness of the floor beneath you. Our next pose is called air releasing pose. And it's a nice, simple, but a very effective pose at releasing your lower back. And you can come into this pose by bringing your knees towards your chest, wrapping your arms around your legs. And all you have to do here is make sure that you haven't crossed your ankles. Try to keep your feet right beside each other and that will ensure that you get a nice even stretch into both sides of the body. Now your knees can be close together, they can be wider apart if needed. And you can choose the intensity of this pose by hugging yourself even tighter or just not hugging yourself so tight, whatever works for you. We'll be here for three minutes. So just make sure you don't cross into that yang energy that you're not using too much muscle by hugging your knees to your chest. Inhale to feel your belly expand against your thighs. And exhale to feel yourself getting a little bit smaller. Take your last three full breaths here. And now you can unfurl out into corpse pose, 
spreading your legs long on the mat, palms facing up, arms and legs taking up as much space as they need. Chin is slightly tucked towards your chest to lengthen through the back of your neck. We'll just rest here for one minute, feeling all the effects of the poses that you've been practicing. Let's check in with our jaw, make sure nothing is clenched. Facial muscles are soft. Shoulders are relaxing. Savor one last breath here in corpse pose. And then when you're ready, you can bring a little bit of movement back into your body. You might take this opportunity to do a full body stretch, extending your arms up past your head, stepping your feet together, and then stretching through every single muscle of your body. Big breath in to stretch even more, and then exhale to release. From here, you can start to slowly pick yourself back up, making our way into our next pose, which is Melting Heart or Anahatasana. So we're, we'll have our knees on the mat. If you need a little bit of extra padding, place your cushion or blanket in underneath your knees. Then reach your hands towards the front of your mat. Now from here, just your chest and head are coming back towards the yoga mat. If needed, you can place your hands in underneath your head just to bridge that distance. Now our hips are staying relatively over our knees. That's going to help to get this nice gentle back bend into our upper and mid back. But if you need to shift your knees a little bit, that's okay. We'll be here for three minutes. If you start to feel any discomfort or numbness within your arms, you can bend your elbows, bring your hands back closer to you. Or you can practice this pose by just having one arm at a time in front. Now let's bring our awareness to whatever sensation you're feeling within your body. Breathe into it.
take three last breaths here in Melting Heart. When you're ready, gently start to slide onto the front of your body, allowing everything to come back to the earth. Make a little pillow with your hands in front of you. Rest your cheek or forehead onto your pillow. Bring your big toes to touch each other and drop your heels towards the edge of the mat. Resting here in crocodile pose. Letting the body digest the pose that we've done. Our next pose is Sphinx Pose. So when you're ready, you can widen your feet a little bit wider. Bring your forearms onto the mat in front of you. And then clasp opposite elbows with your hands. This is going to be the distance that we'll try to keep our elbows apart from each other. Forearms can come back to the mat. So here we are in our Sphinx Pose. Just like we did last week, this time there will be an option to add seal pose where we'll be going a little bit deeper into this spinal compression. If this feels too intense for you, you can just slide your elbows even further away from you. We'll be in sphinx or seal pose for five minutes, so make sure you find something that's sustainable for you, something that is keeping you at or below 80% of your capacity. You can gaze straight out in front or you can drop your head opening through the back of your neck. Sphinx pose is a really great pose for the lower back. So let's bring our awareness there, sending each breath into it, feeling your belly spill across the mat as you do so. We've been here for three minutes now, so you're welcome to stay in Sphinx if that's enough for you today. But if you want to go a little bit deeper, we can start to transition into seal pose. Now in seal pose, we're simply straightening out the arms. The position of your hands will vary. You can bring them closer to you. You can have them mat width distance apart or wider. You can just experiment here and find what works for you. Then when you're there, you might just aim to make your arms straight. If that doesn't happen, that's okay. Once again, gazing straight out in front, or we can take our gaze up, opening up through the chest and the throat. 
still breathing deeply into the lower back. Now, if you're in Sphinx or Seal Pose, there is an option to bend your knees. It will make the compression in your lower back a little bit stronger, so just be mindful. Take it nice and slowly and only do what feels good for your body. Taking three more breaths now. And wherever you are, you can start to slowly peel yourself back onto the mat. Feeling that big release of energy as you come back to crocodile pose. Big toes finding each other again whatever direction you looked last time in crocodile pose, you might look the other direction now, stretching out your neck the opposite way. Now start to coax yourself back from this relaxation and you can slowly lift yourself back up. Sitting on the mat for just a moment while we prepare for our next pose, which is dangling. So to come into dangling pose, you can bring the soles of your feet onto the mat, having them about hip width distance apart. Now knees can be as much bent as they need to be here. Then we're allowing our back to round, dropping our head towards the mat. Come to hold opposite elbows and they can either hang low, just letting gravity do the work. Or if you need a little bit of support here, you can rest your elbows onto your thighs. Now, once again, don't be afraid to bend your knees as much as you need to. And if you have any kind of back disorder or pain, don't worry too much about rounding your spine. You can keep it straight. Try to balance the weight equally, equally between the front and the back of your feet. Feeling your entire spine opening and stretching. This is a great pose to rejuvenate all of the nerves along your spine. Also releasing your lower back. Strengthening your diaphragm. Massaging all those internal organs. 
So use your breath to help explore your body so you can find all of those sensations. Each inhale will lengthen your spine a little bit. Each exhale might help you to drop a little bit lower. We'll be here for three minutes or for however long you can maintain this pose in comfort. Now, before we release the pose, you might bring your hands back down towards the mat. With an inhale, glide your hands up along your legs until your back becomes flat at a 90 degree angle to your legs. And then exhale to bend the knees, drop the hands and head back down. We'll repeat that inhaling up into a flat back. Exhaling to release. Next time you can slowly roll your spine all the way back up. Just one vertebrae at a time. Eventually coming back to stand on the mat one of the rare times that we stand in yin yoga. Take a big breath in here and just feel whatever you feel. Now we'll come into our next pose, which is squat pose. So begin by widening your feet nice and wide apart. And then as best you can, bend your knees and lower yourself down into that squat pose. As always, we're not too concerned with how this pose looks, just focus on how it's feeling. Try to have your knees and feet pointed in the same direction. Elbows can come in between the knees and you might bring the palms of your hands together, gently pushing the knees away from you if that feels good. If your heels are lifted up off the mat, that's normal. You can take the cushion or blanket and put them in underneath. You can also sit on something here. Maybe your cushion will work or if you have a yoga block, that can help you as well. We're here for five minutes, but as always, you don't need my permission to come out of the pose. If you need to release, that's fine. You can just sit on your mat, you can come into child's pose, or another option here is to come back into dangling pose. Wait until you feel ready and then come back into squat pose. So trying to keep our spine nice and straight here. This is a great pose to release the lower back. We're opening up our hips. And as a little bonus here, we're strengthening our ankles. Let's take a big breath in together. Send it all the way down into your pelvis. Exhale to release. 
this pose is very challenging that much I know <laughs> it's very tempting to start to fidget or to move around and if you're in pain of course you need to move you need to get out of the pose but otherwise just try your best to find that stillness your mind might start to feel agitated and if it does just see if you can self-soothe if you can tell yourself it's okay or if you can focus on your breath instead or maybe you can find something about the sensation that feels good something that you enjoy Let's check in, making sure we haven't slumped into the pose, that our spine is still nice and long, jaw is relaxed, facial muscles are soft, breath is traveling all the way to the tailbone. Knees are still pointing in the same direction as the feet are. Take three of your last breaths here in squat. Now to come out of the pose, you can either go back slowly the way we came in, maybe tilting forward so your hands can come back to the mat. You can stand up or you can bring your hands back behind you, bringing your bum back to the mat and then stretching your legs long. Taking a few moments here, maybe you need to release your hips with some windshield wipers. Maybe you're happy just to rotate your ankles and shake out your legs. And once you feel satisfied that you have released squat pose, you can come on down to lie on your back, slowly rolling the spine back to the floor, resting for a moment, allowing that realignment to happen. Our final yin yoga pose before we come into our final relaxation will be a reclined twist. So you can start by bringing your arms out wide, left to right, having your palms facing down. Gently press your palms into the floor so you're creating a little bit of energy within your upper body. Now both knees come towards the chest. Peel your tailbone slightly off of the mat and then drop both knees over towards the left. So we've created this little twist in our spine, helping to release any tension. We just want to make sure both of our shoulders stay connected to the mat here. If your right shoulder has come up off the mat, you can place your blanket in underneath or else just reverse out of your twist a little bit so you can keep that shoulder to the floor. Now you might want to stack your hips a little bit, bringing your right hip over your left. That's going to create more of a twist in your spine. You can also go deeper by looking over towards the right, gazing out over those right fingertips. 
the higher you bring your knees, the higher up along your spine you're going to target. So you can find a position which feels good for you. And if this doesn't feel like enough of a twist for you, there is an option here to come back to center, then wrap your right leg around your left so you're creating two twists. And then we're just doing exactly what we did before, lifting our tailbone and gently dropping both knees over towards the left, stacking the hips and keeping both shoulders connected to the floor. Still gently pressing our arms and our palms into the floor. And that's going to help to amplify that twist. Finding your breath. Finding your anchors within your body. And just allowing gravity to do all of the work here. And when you're ready, use your left arm against the floor as leverage and slowly come back. Big ah. Uh, take some time just to lie on your back. Release your arms back down. Knees can stay bent and together here if that feels good. Observing a difference within the two sides of your body, really feeling how the equilibrium is off between the left and the right. But of course we will Restore that equilibrium by repeating the pose on the opposite side. So arms can come back out wide, palms are pressing down, knees come towards the chest. Now you're either taking your twist into your legs by wrapping your left leg around the right, and it's okay if you're not ready to go there today. Together we'll peel the tailbone off the mat and drop both knees towards the right. Maybe stacking the hips. This time the left hip is on top. Make sure your left shoulder can stay grounded. And if you want to go deeper, you can look over your left shoulder. Just dripping deeper and deeper into this twist. Twisting the body like this always reminds me of twisting out an old dishcloth, wringing it out to get rid of any dirt or any blockages. Just 
getting rid of anything that you don't want to take with you beyond this practice. And now we'll take our last three breaths for this pose. When you're ready, you can start to unravel You can take this time to do whatever your body is asking you to do that might just be lying like this with your knees bent and together. You might feel like bringing your knees back towards your chest. Or you might feel like some windshield wipers feet back to the floor and then drop the knees slowly from side to side. We'll be spending the last few minutes of this practice in corpse pose. Really important at the end of any yin yoga session or really any yoga session to take the time just to be still and let the body absorb all the benefits of this practice. So make sure you're comfortable. You might put your blanket over you. And then stretch your legs long. Feet and hands can be as wide apart as needed. Chin tucked gently towards the chest. Body is completely relaxed now. Nothing is needed in this moment. No one is working in there. Relax your jaw, soften your face, drop your shoulders, drop your hips, drop your knees, drop your feet. Drop your entire body into the earth. Give yourself permission to completely relax and I'll let you know when it's time to come back.
You're welcome to stay here for longer if you can. But if you are ready to come back, you can make gentle movements. You might take this opportunity to do another full body stretch. One last spinal stretch. And then in your own time, come back to find a seat on your yoga mat. Once you're there in your seat, we'll end this practice just by taking a few deep breaths together. Noticing how your body feels and if anything is different from when you started this practice. And really thank yourself for showing up and for spending this time on your mat. Take one last full breath in. With your exhale, you can open up your eyes again. Thank you so much for joining me for this yin yoga class. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a thumbs up or comment below and make sure you're subscribed to my channel as well. That really helps me to make this yoga content and to keep it free. So I would really appreciate it if you could do that. And if you are not joining me for this challenge, if you just stumbled across this video, make sure to check out the challenge. It basically involves lots more full length yin yoga classes just like this. So if you want to do more classes like that, make sure to check out the description of the video. So I'll see you for our next yin yoga class. Until then, take care and goodbye.